Well, what are we fixing today? Well, today I'm a little miffed because I went through and shot most of this video and realized I didn't have my OBS recording, so I didn't record anything from my screen. So it would just been videos of me talking about something that you couldn't see. I don't think that was going to work, so take two. Today, I'm here to fix some things you might have a problem with. That's what we're fixing today. I'm going to go through backing up all my Tasmoda and power devices into an add-on on Home Assistant. I'll show you how that works. And then we're going to go through a Google Drive enabled backup storage for your snapshots to make sure that nothing gets lost. Let's go. All right, now, first thing I'm gonna do is check, yes, my OBS is recording. <sighs> All right, here's my OBS screen. Oh, 107.6 is available. We're not gonna do that today. I don't wanna, I got a new microphone too, see? Maybe you can hear me on these videos. That would be a plus, right? I also got a backup microphone recording something, another over there. So between the two sources, hopefully I can come up with something that is actually legible. I'm learning. What can I say? Here is my screen again. I'm not touching my face because I'm screaming. Um, we are going to add a couple of add-ons. So the first one we're going to add is called Tasmo Backup. Let's go over there and look at it. I'm on Supervisor and then went to the add-on store. You can see I already added the uh, repository for this. And I'll put this link in the uh, in the data, but Tasmo Backup V1 HTTPS, this, if you take this and paste it into here and hit Add, that gives you this, all right? Once it's here, I can scroll down and we can find it. It's on the bottom, I think. Right here. You can find it right here. It's in the repository. So then, if we want to add this add on, we just go boom here. Um, this is awesome stuff. This is a link to support the man. So if you use this, please go to his link, give him a couple bucks. He spent a lot of time working on this. Uh, they're still very responsive to issues. Uh, I had an issue, and I'm working with them right now about it. So, a minor background thing, but I thought he'd want to clean it up. And I forgot to turn that camera on. Cross your fingers. Let's hope it all worked. So, <laughs> I'm having a good day. So here is, uh, click on this, give the guy a support. I sent him a couple bucks, so go ahead and give this a click. Mr. Patrick did an office awesome job here, so be sure to do that. Uh, so we're going to hit install. Install. Oh, one thing that's been going on in the background, why I didn't have a video last couple days is I took my, I have a, a Linux Ubuntu server that's running my home assistant. It is running a traditional hard disk. Uh, I got an SSD in there. I changed some stuff around, streamlined it a bit. So now my updates are much better. Things should go a little better today. Um, so it's installed now. Some things we want to do is we want to show in sidebar and watch when I click this, you'll see, you see it show up over there, I believe. Boop, there it goes. Tasmo backup right there. So that's a good thing to do. Uh, Tasmo backup, you want to start on boot because you're, we're going to do an automation to have it do itself. Nice, right? Here's uh, auto update. This will update the add-on when there's an update. Um, on this one, I suggest not clicking that, just because if there's a change, you probably want to know what the change is 
and make sure the change is going to work for you before you uh, install it. So you want to leave that off and then when they're it's installed now. So when there is a backup, you go on your dashboard. Yeah. It, I forgot to push the start. This is the third time today. All right. Sorry for the for that. This, anyway, we get back to this screen. This is your dashboard for your add-ons. And if there's an update that's required, I don't have any that need an update now, but there'll be a bar here, a colored bar. And you go in there and look and say, okay, I'm going to go into this now in there and look, and I'm going to, oh, the, oh, this one's got to, pretend this one's got a thing, it'll say, it'll have an update button here, it'll have the page here, you go to the page, take a look at what they changed, and uh, usually it's okay, but sometimes it's breaking changes that you really need to do something for, maybe change the configuration here or something, so you want to, things like this you want to do, take a look for your, um, those breaking changes, so. I'm just checking, yes, I'm recording it, so you know, we don't want to do this again. So this is the default configuration. I'm not going to change the configure at all. Um, there isn't a lot of options in the add-on part of this. There is also a, a uh, Docker container and a, uh, well, there's, other, there's other containers that you can use to set this up and get it going. Um, I did have the Docker one running for a while, but it's a little more advanced and I'm not ready to do a video about it. So. Um, I switched my stuff to the add-on one that I can understand it better. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Here, look over here, yep. So here you want, you don't want to, um, we're going to paste the thing here. 8259 is the port that you want enabled. And you want this enabled because you're going to call this from a REST command in order to do an auto backup from within Home Assistant. Um, if this port isn't enabled, you can't do that. This is only an internal port to the Home Assistant instance, so it's okay. Um, we have a, we have this, what do you call it? I forget, ingress, we have ingress, so you don't need this for the ingress, but you do need this to talk to the thing. So, that's set up. I don't have to change anything. Oh, I got to save here. Whenever you make changes to here or here, you have to hit save. So now it's, I think it's saved, yeah. So now we're going to go and do start. Start's going to spinny up there, and then when it's going, it's going to show us stuff here. Oh, there we go. Starting. Do a little click, click. And it says it's running. So it's all up. It's running. It's all long takes the seconds. It's really cool. Um, there isn't much to this Docker container, so we refresh again and there's nothing there. There'll be stuff there after we do some work. Now that it's up and it's running, we can go over here to Tasmo Backup in the Ingress side. And we get this screen. I'm going to shrink this out of the way and make us a little more room. This screen is your control panel for Tasmo Backup. This is all the manual controls. This is a web interface to it, all right? If you want, well, let's try this first. I'll just take one device. This is one of my Tasmo enabled devices. I'm going to type the IP address in here, and yours will be different. Uh, I don't have a password. Don't tell anybody. And then you click Add. And seconds later, Kitchen Fan has been added. Now, Kitchen Fan is hanging out here, and it's enabled. Now, if I want to do a backup of the configuration that's on there, which includes, like, if you do a scratch load of Tasmona on this device, you can then look at the, if you look at the front end, you can see there's a thing in there, back up the configuration, restore the configuration. This uses that tool inside of the Tasmona to do that. And if I want to do a backup, I just push, boom, back up, bang, done. It is backed up. Now I have, I go over here to where it says files. I can do that. And I have one copy, which was backed up then, and it's stored in the database inside of this add-on. Um, the great thing about that is it's stored inside the add-on. So later when you take a snapshot of Home Assistant, it's stored there. So 
it's gone off and it's in a safe place so you can restore it if you need to. From here I can delete this or I can restore. Restore will push this back out to the device. So if I now, if I did a backup of this device and I went in and worked on it like I usually do and mess it up like I often do and it stops working and you can say, damn it, oh wait, Tasmo Admin's gonna save my ass. Here we go. When you come back in here and you do restore, I'm not gonna click it because I don't wanna mess with it. All right now, because I didn't mess with kitchen fan. So uh, kitchen fan is where uh, the wife works. So I don't wanna mess with it unless I have to. <laughs> you can hit restore though and it will restore it. So there you go. If I wanna delete it, and as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to delete this one because I'm gonna show you a better way to do this. I'm gonna do a delete. Okay. And now that one's gone. Say, oh, I did that one. I didn't know. Oh, that that's going to goof me up if I restore that. I don't want to restore that. That's how you delete it. All right. So. I guess previous isn't happy. I'll close. Okay. Now let's refresh the screen. And you can see now there's zero files back up. But it still knows about this because it won't forget. Now let's say you have like, I don't know. 24 Tasmona devices and you want them all backed up and you don't want to go in and try to find all the manual addresses. In my case, I have all my devices in an IP range between 80 and 120 on this subnet. So if I click this in that format in here and again, these don't seem to have a password either, I can go do a discover. And within about two minutes, we're going to have a list of all the Tasmona enabled devices. Oh, quicker than that. Look at there. I now have a list of all the Tasmona enabled devices in my house. Isn't this cool? This is also works great if like, oh, I got to fix the dishwasher switch. Uh, I don't remember the IP address. You come in here to Tasmo backup and you go, you know, sort by name. Here we go. We're, it's our sorted by name now. You can sort it any way you want, right? Um, and you say, yep, dishwasher 83, right? And it's like, oh, wait, no. And then you can, and you can got, and you know what it is. You can got the IP address and you can copy this out and go work on it. I believe, I believe, if I open this link in a new tab, I believe it will open the device so it'll take me right there if I want to as well nice right very very nice this is a very cool tool now you say okay here they are now should I click all these which it used to be but in this latest rev he added a select all button boop all selected all selected now all I gotta do is do an add devices and give it a couple seconds. It's pulling all the data in from these that it needs. It's loading it into a database that's internal to the add-on. And the add-on will then have them until you tell the add-on to make them go away. So 26 entries. And let's see. Yep, 112 is the one we looked at before. It's already in the database, so it does not duplicate that. And here we got a device 104 that is not responding. All right, close. Let's see, what's 104? That's the one that's there, all right. And 104 didn't answer in time. Oh, wait, we just sort by IP. 104 is the basement hall socket. Uh, well, I've got the information. Anything else not have the information? No? Okay. So these are all there. If, if you, you know, so the next thing to do is, well, now I want to back these all up, right? So if you're in the control panel and you want to do a backup all on ad hoc right away, you could do it right here. Here we go. Back up all. Oh, I 
takes a few seconds. Again. Maybe a minute or so. It's very quick and very clean. I like this a lot. Wait till this pops up, and then I'm going to go here because I haven't been here before. SEO ingress settings. Okay, I gotta see. I gotta look at that. I don't know what that is. Oh, see the blink? That blink was plug two. Well, that was plug three. Probably getting touched by this tool, sending the DMP file. There they come. Oh, well, not all of them happen, so that's fine. Some of them won't, so we can come down here and look. All these with the one, they all got a backup. Living room light didn't get a backup, so... Let's just push the button again. See if it'll go. Oh, I went that time. And that's the only one that didn't go. So, let's look at plug 3, which is up here. And click on the number 1. So inside of here, we got a restore button. So we can restore the backup from here. This will push it out to the device. Cool, right? You can download the file, you can do it yourself. Very nice, right? So, I don't think previous works or next. So, it doesn't do what I would expect it to. All right, backup completed successfully. So now we have them all backed up, right? And this is fine if you want to go in and do them manually or whatever. Oh wait, I wanted to look at this. What does this do? I haven't looked at this yet. Oh! You can set up the interface. Um, nice. Ah, oh, I gotta put in a, I gotta put these in. If I put these in, I think it'll pull the data from, um, MQTT instead of pounding on the machines like that? That would be good, right? Max days to keep? Oh, oh. Max count to keep. Let's don't keep any more than one month, 30. I like that. This I'll put in some other time when you're not watching. Uh, automatically add new devices. Sure. Let's add new devices automatically. It'll only find them through MQTT, I believe. But I don't have a password. But if you have a password, you put it in here and it adds it to it. Theme, dark. Dark theme. Dark. I don't need 100 rows, but I probably need 50 rows. Let's do 50 rows. Sort column name, that's good. Okay. And hit save. This is awesome. This I'm, I'm finding this the first time here now. Isn't this cool? All right. You can do even do export of the whole database and do what you want with it. Plot it on um, Grafana or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's cool, right? All right. Let's go back. And back. All right. Yes, I know. All right. So that's in there. What's next? Next, we would like to probably make this happen by itself, right? I'll show you how to do that. First thing is, you, this thing runs off of, in order to get a hold of the data and, and tell it to start, you have to run a PHP file, which is kind of a blind file. It's not well integrated into Home Assistant. So if you, I'll show you, you have to make a rest sensor. So let's go up here. And for me, let's do configuration.yaml. 
This is, okay, yes, I understand. Make this go away. Oh, it's there, never mind. This is my configuration.yaml. This is how I do it, and I like this way a lot. I don't like split configs. I don't like massive 3,000 line configs because they are, like, those are both, to me, impossible to use. This is the best one that I've found. I take all my integrations, or devices, whatever you call these things, keywords, and I add them into the file. And really, that's all that's in here. You see, I got 46 lines, so I have 46 devices in here. These devices, um, if there's more to it, like... For instance, for, we're going to do rest sensor, rest command. So rest command, we're going to add a rest command. So in order to do this, I had to edit this, add a rest command. I set an include to a file that you name yourself. And I always name it the same as the command with a .yaml. And then you create that file and then you go and edit it. And in this case, this is the edit. I gave it a name. The name was Tasmo Admin Backup. So later in the services, I will look for something called Tasmo Admin Backup. That's a REST command. And then you put in the URL. The URL is your Home Assistant instance. This is your Home Assistant instance right here. So that will change based on what your Home Assistant instance is. Um, I'm Imagine if you have your network set up right, you could even put in a host name there. I don't know. This is what I do, though. And this 8259 is the port that we put in in the configuration. Remember that? It's the only configuration change we made. And we want to pick this port because it works well with the back end. So this is the port that you really should always use. This backup all.php is something that comes with the tool. This is the query that does the uploading of the data, the script that does the uploading of the data from the TASMO devices into uh, the database. And, and then we tell it to do a get. It's like I do. So you have to save this. You have to update Home Assistant and it'll re re reload it. And, but before you do that, uh, well, we can do that. Let's pretend I did that, right? And now let's go into Let's go into Supervisor, Developer Tools, sorry, go into su su Developer Tools, and then Services, and search for this. All you got to do is, okay, this is where you're going to come in there, it's going to say Service, you go click and say REST, and in here I have one called REST Command Tasmo Backup. This Tasmo backup is the name that I named that REST command. Um, if you want to run it, all you do is call service. So this is another manual button to call the service that's not inside the tool. This will now run this REST command. It will also test the REST command to make sure it's working for you. This is the, uh, this is, this will, what this will end up doing is... Let's come over here. Let's go into Tasmo Backup. It won't tell you what it's doing because it's happening in the background asynchronously to this. But if I look, no, I don't know if I'm yet. Let's, let's reload. Try it one more time, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to check the log. Oh, let's check the log. What screen am I on? To check the log, go into Supervisor, System, and you look at the logs. So it looks like it's working. Everything's green down here. All right. Let's go look again. It's probably done. Uh, 
Oh, maybe I broke it in the config. Let's set the config back to where it was. What do I want to do? Oh, um, backup minimum between hours. <laughs> I need to turn this to zero because I need to show you what's going on. I set that to, that was set to 23. Uh, so say if that's what it was, the backup was stopped because I had that set to 23. It's supposed to do that. I did what it's supposed to. So let's go back over here. Just refresh this just to make sure. I want to go back into here and restart. Just sometimes when you change things, you want to make sure this is going correctly. So I'm going to do a restart of the application. Now with the config that says don't mix it if it's not 23 hours apart. All right. Now let's go into developer tools. Uh, yeah, services. Rest command, call service. Now let's go into here. I can't look at it there. I can look at it here. Refresh this. Backup all was called. All right. Let's look if it actually did it this time. Because now it should have been able to. And, well, that one didn't get done. So bedroom fan got missed, but the rest of them are twos. Now if we go in here and look, there's a two. So yeah, I had the, the minimum hours between set to 23, which is something very useful, but when I'm showing everybody how to do things, it did, wasn't helpful today. So, okay. So now I have two. And, you know, in that config up there, you can set how many, you can set... Uh, how long you can set all kinds of things so that controls this and limits the amount of data that this builds up so that's really cool right i like that all right so now let's say you don't want to you don't want to push this button and you don't want to push this button because buttons are bad right now let's make it push its own freaking button so let's come over to your home assistant and go into my automations. In my automations, I have one called daily backup. Now I have, uh, we're gonna, we're not gonna do, we're, we're gonna change this one later, but inside of this daily backup, it happens so, so you always gotta give your automations some random number and I gave it, um, I gave it a number and it's called daily backup. The initial state is on, which means the automation is enabled to run. The trigger is platform time at a certain time. So when it gets to be 6 a.m., 14 minutes, 56 seconds, then it says, oh, it's time. The action is, the first one is add on start for this and we'll change this later. And the other one is Rest command tasbo in the backup. And if you remember, that's exactly the command that we built over here. So we can just service call that command. Um, this is a, this is an automation. So you take this, paste it in there, save it, update. I did that already, so we don't have to wait. And then every day at six fourteen, it will run something and this backup commands so that would be once a day so then I could put the 23 back in say so that's pretty cool all right that's how you make it run itself every day next we're going to look at doing snapshots which is going to come into here and snapshots will happen again every day and they'll be stored off-site at least some of them will be so let's look at that. Whew. 
All right. I'm back into the supervisor. Uh, to the add-on store. So the add-on that we're going to use to do the backups for snapshots into Google Drive is this one. And again, to get this, you can get this in, this string in the uh, uh, in the in the excuse me in the website for the video. This is the this is the data. You would take that, copy it, and paste it here, and then hit add. You know, paste. I'm not going to do it now because it's already there. But then you would hit add, and then it will show up down here like this and then you'll have an add-on available to click to start so let's go into that add-on this add-on again if you use the google drive backup which is pretty nice uh, and there was a lot of work put into it you should go onto the get me read me and you should really go down scroll down to the bottom here and buy the guy a coffee because you know, this has got to be worth a couple bucks to you if you're using it and you're counting on it to save. Oh, we lost some lights. That's cool. If you're counting on it to save your data so that your data doesn't crash, right? So click on this. Buy Stephen a coffee. All right. Three bucks a piece. Buy him a cup of coffees. They could use the help and the support. All right, so here is the front page. We're going to do an install. It doesn't have a log available for this tool, apparently. Let's go down. Oh, there's a log. Don't see anything? No, I don't see anything. This has a network port already set up. I don't change that. I suggest you don't change it. Um, they have a default config. And since I've been working with this already, I am going to load a config I had already. Copy. Paste. Now this changes a few things from the original. I already have 14 snapshots. I like to keep two weeks worth of snapshots locally. So I that's so I set that to 14. I think the default is four. The max snapshot in Google Drive is three, according to the way they have it, this one set. Now Google Drive, if you don't pay for extra software, extra space, is 15 gigabytes. 15 gigabytes ain't a ton. Um, my backups are around 300 megabytes. You can add it up and figure it out. If you're not using the Google Drive for anything else, this is fine, right? You can store quite a few up there. I would suggest storing more than just one up there. Generally, you want to... And if you look at the GitHub here, it'll go through a scenario where, you know, they, they, they say what they suggest is to store, like, and you can set this up in the config. You can store like at least three of the most recent, at least pick a number, say five weeklies. So pick a day of the week that you want to save a weekly. Pick a day of the month that you want to save a monthly for longer than that. And you can even pick annually. And it will keep a bunch of these back there. Now, why would you want this? Well, all of a sudden uh, 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 something changes, right? And your backup is doing backup and backup and backup. If you don't save a couple of later backups, all of a sudden you look and say, oh, this is broke. When did that break? Oh, it broke a week ago. I only have two backups. I can't go back before to see what's going on in order to fix it. Sometimes you got to do that. So it's, you know, that's why I keep 14 backups. A um, little bit excessive, but I I'm, I'm feel comfortable with that. And uh, I, I'm in this case, I actually use a different tool. I don't use the Google Drive tool, but I thought this one would be more popular. I and easier to set up, certainly. So I'm just going to set this up for three and in between. And 
here it's going to, and it's, this one's going to happen at 6:42 in the morning. That's when the snapshot's going to happen, all by itself. Nice, right? I don't have to set. So, it's going back to here. The backup system I have now, I have to fire it, right? So, this Google Drive, if you're running it, uh, this Google Drive is running. It's gonna. It, you already tell it what time to go, and it's just gonna go at that time every day. So that's nice, right? Then you put in a password. Super secret is not a good password. And if you go. By the time you read this video, this will not be part of my system, so you won't be able to go in and see. What this password is, is for encrypting the file that's put up there, encrypting the file, and you can, when you want to restore one of the fi files that came back from Google Drive, you're going to need this to de-encrypt the file. It's so that anybody else can just go up there and hack into your stuff and get your, get everything. There's some other options that were default, so I left them there. Uh, okay, I got to, always when you change this, you need to do a save. I didn't change this, so I don't need to save that. And I'm going to do, oh, let's do a show in sidebar. I think that would be a good idea. Should show snapshots over here now, right? That's, that's, snapshots is the one for this. And auto update, again, this is a backup program to vend your backup you want to make sure things are correct so I would suggest not clicking auto update um, if you know you can always forget and you just trust everybody and you're good to go you could click auto update and then whenever there's an update to the add-on in the store it will just pull it in so it's kind of a nice feature but for some things it's always best to read the uh, read the back the, the git page for it and to see what the changes were in case they're going to be breaking changes and they mess you up so all right done done start let's do start all right now let's go over to snapshots now we're going to fire up and go into our google drive uh, if you have any, if any gmail google account it'll work with this and if your home Google account is kind of full of stuff, you can just do another Google account because you're not going to really mail, you're not going to do anything with it, you just need some space. But, you know, I didn't say that. I'm going to put this one on my email address. I already have, uh, it, this is, well, that person, you're, giving, you're trusting that person to go in and drop stuff in your account. So that's why it's probably another good idea. You're giving somebody trust to this folder in Google Drive. You might just want to start like a random email account that you only use for this. Um, you can see I already, already use this. Uh, I did a test. Remember I said that I didn't have the camera on? Well, let me check again. Yeah, it's still recording. I didn't have the camera on. Yeah, that's when I set this one up. So we're just going to use this folder. Um, it's going to start syncing. So right now, it so it just made this backup snapshot while I was talking. So the snapshot happened, and now it's pushing the snapshot up to the Google Drive. That's how easy this is. It just happens. So it's pretty nice, right? Uh, right now I have 14 locals. I have one up in the Google Drive. And then when this one completes, there'll be two up in the Google Drive. All right. What do we got for actions here? You can delete. You can restore. We can restore it from here, which is nice. You can say, oh, this is... This is one I want to keep for a long time, so do and never delete. Or you can download it and you can look at it and can I don't know what you do with it then. <laughs> All right. Here's another spot for buy me a coffee. Please give these guys some some kudos. Uh, we're not going to hang around waiting for this. Let's go. Let's go back to snapshots. 
All right, let's go into settings. Here into settings, you see 14, 3, time. These look familiar. These are the same things that I showed you. Let's go service. Service with a smile. Sorry, supervisor. Uh, Google Drive. This is the add on. See, 14.3, fault 6.42. Let's go back where we are. 14.3, 3, password, a super secret password. And then there's some other things. Whenever you make changes in here, you do your save. Um, and you can look at these and you can change them how you want. It's, you can probably break things here, but I don't think it's too bad. There are other configuration things that you will find on the GitHub that you can add in here manually. When you're all done, there'll be a save button here. If you see the save button, I would do a save and then I would do a restart because that'll make sure everything's there. Not too bad, huh? This is a pretty simple one. Uh, I kind of like it. I don't know. I like my local copy better, but uh, maybe someday we'll go into local copy. We're not going to do that today. So, that's what we did today. Showed you how to back up your Tasmona devices into your HASIO slash Home Assistant. I've got to get the name right, right? Home Assistant um, supervisor panel, so it's stored in the add-on. And then you take that add-on, all the other add-ons, all the other configs, everything you need to recreate Home Assistant, and you make a snapshot. And the snapshot then goes to a second drive. Remember, well, I don't know if you remember or not, but it's always good to have, when you're doing backups, you want to have, like, two different kinds of, two different backups on two in two places with like two or three kinds of media so you got so you, if you're something really important you want to make sure that there's always a way to get it back but we 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 now will have a copy on the google drive of your configuration your snapshot and we'll also have a copy on the on your system so that'd be cool right if i helped you at all Please give me a like. Likes are good. Otherwise, you know, give me a thumbs down and tell me in the comments what I did wrong because, you know, I'm learning and I, I like the down comments because they tell me what people want and I want to be your dealer. <laughs> from a car commercial I heard. Anyway, give me a like if you can. Um, subscribe. I need subscribers. And... Here's some other videos that you can look at from Home Assistant and from some other things from me. So, hope you enjoy. Until then, stay safe, stay locked down, and see you next time.